Hi, this is Ambie from Board Game Blitz, and today I'm talking about some highlights from my plays in September. I track my plays using BG Stats app, which links to Board Game Geek. And in September, I had 28 plays of 18 different games, five of which were new to me. Most of these were children's games. It was like a lighter month on regular game nights, but I played a lot of games with my kids, and my kids had a birthday, so they got some new games too. There were a couple of review copies I got that were new to me. First is Rabble, which I talked about Sync last time, and Rabble is by the same publisher, Rabble. Rabble is a party game that's kind of like monikers with some challenge cards that make you do extra funny stuff. I talked about it and Sync on the podcast, so you can listen to that for more info. I think I also mentioned last time that I got a bunch of review, review copies of Holiday Hijinks games. Holiday Hijinks are escape room games that are in 18 cards and a web app. I played the Turkey Trial and the Birthday... They're all alliterations. Birthday Burglary. So I played those in September. I liked them. They're nice puzzle hunty escape rooms. And the podcast episode about that is coming out next episode, which is actually going to be an interview with the designer. So that's exciting. They're actually going to be running a Kickstarter for the new ones. So that's why we have like a podcast interview with the designer and we got the review copies. So there's new ones. You can get the holiday hijinks soon if you want them. All right, and then like I've had mostly party games of non new to me games this month. Uh, we had a friend came over and we introduced him to a lot of our party games. One game that we haven't played in a while is Illusion, which is a party game about optical illusions. There's these cards with different colors on them, but like they're kind of optical illusions, so you can't tell how much of one color is on each card, and you're trying to put them in order. So there's gonna be one card on the table, and you're trying to put it in order of like the percentage of red on the card or something. And so you draw a card on your turn and then place it where you think it goes. And on your turn if you think it's wrong then you can say oh I think it's wrong otherwise you draw a card and you have to place it and so there's a little bit of like press your luck and bluffing kind of like a durian type where you're drawing the card and saying that it's right but then everyone can see it and then there's cards that look like they're have a lot of red compared to other ones but then it's actually the other way around you flip them over and it shows all the percentage and blows your mind optical illusions are amazing so <laughs> That's a fun, quick game for people who are into optical illusions. Another game we played with our friend is The Game, which is a horrible name. But The Game is a card game, cooperative card game, where you're trying to play all of the cards, and the cards go from 2 to 99. There's four piles. There's two that start at 100 and go down, and two that start at 1 and go up. And so you have to play them in order, and you have to play, you have to play two cards on your turn. So like, if you only have cards in the middle, it's kind of bad if you go early, because then you're like, oh, I have to play this 30 on the pile, and like, no one can play a card under it anymore. But if you have cards that are 10 off, so if you have like 31 on the pile that's going up, and you have the 21, you can go backwards. So it's really cool when you have like that combo of going back a few times. And I was able to get that in this play, which was neat. I, I was like, oh, I have like three cards in a row that can go backwards. So it was really exciting to play a bunch of cards that go up high, but then bring it back. This game, like we hadn't played in a while because when The Mind came out, that kind of like replaced that genre of game for us, of cooperative card games of playing numbers in order. <laughs> but it, it is like a different feel than The Mind because this one's like turn-based, not real-time, and it has like different strategies in it. So it's still fun. I like having both games. All right, on to the children's games that my kid got for his birthday. So I have twins, but one of them is more into board games than others, and that one likes pirates a lot. So I actually mentioned one of these on the podcast, and that's Captain Pepe Treasure Ahoy, which is a legacy game for ages six plus. My kids just turned five and it's fine for them, but it's officially ages six plus. We've played through five or six chapters, and I think there's like 20 something chapters in the game. But the base game is an abstract puzzly game. There's a pirate ship and five members of the crew and they're all different colors. And then they have five oars that are all five different colors. And then on the board are spaces like dots and then lines connecting those dots. So you can put the people on the dots and you have to move them along the lines. But people can't cross over each other. So you would have to like move one out of the way in order to move one to the space that needs to go. You're trying to match up the people to their colored oars. And the way the gameplay works is you can only move one character, one space on your turn. So you're like moving a space and then the next person has to move a space. Sometimes I would move a space and then my kid would move it back. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I'm trying to do this. And, and then you're like thinking of something else. But um, after a few plays, my kid actually like got a lot better at it he's able to plan ahead and be moving things out of the way because like in order to get everything in the spot you have to look at everything and where everything is 
and then move things out of the way and move them back instead of just focusing on, oh, I want blue to go here. So at first, like you were just, oh, I want blue to just go here. And that's all you would focus on. But he's gotten better. And then each chapter at the end, you get stickers that you can stick on this map to show that like which chapter you're on. And the stickers don't actually like stick into anything that's game changing so far. So they're kind of fun. And then you get extra stickers for just sticking on things outside of the game, which my kid loves stickers. So that's great for him. But then you, there's little treasure box that you open up and you can get new cards and new tokens that affect the gameplay. So there's things that are added, like a crate that gets in the way, and so you have to move it out of the way as well. So my kid has really been enjoying that. He really likes pirates, so he likes the theme and he likes the stickers, so it's like the perfect game for him. <laughs> Another game he got for his birthday is Blackbeard's Treasure Hunt, which is a memory game but also has pirate theme. It's a treasure chest. It's got like a big toy treasure chest that you put gold coins inside. And at the end of the memory game, you're going to be opening it. So you have these keys. It's basically memory where you're flipping two cards and trying to match, but you're trying to get a specific color. Each person has a card that has like five colored dice and it shows you like what order. So I want to get red, then blue, then yellow, then blue, then green or something. And so those are the cards that you're flipping over. The cards have a picture of a big colored die. So if you get your match, you have this big plastic key that's hollow and you like pick up the die with it by like stamping on it and then the dice goes into the key and then once you fill up your key then you can open the treasure chest and the gold comes out so it's basically just memory but with like a little twist and lots of toy factor for people who like pirates and treasure which another game that's like very specific for my kid <laughs> who likes board games and pirates all right, so that's it for my games of September. Let me know what games you played that you enjoyed in September. And also, it's October now, which is Halloween month. I really like Halloween, and I made a new t-shirt design, or I guess it could be used on stickers and other things too, but it's on Tee Public, and it's a little skeleton meeple, which it was a lot of fun making that, and I kind of want to draw more designs. So if you have any ideas for t-shirt designs that you think I could draw, I'm not like a really good artist, and it took me a while to draw that, but yeah, let me know. Maybe I can make some more. Thanks for watching Board Game Blitz. Bye.